Hello Wild Bones, I'm out today with just my day pack and an emergency survival shelter. So I've got no sleeping bag, no sleeping mat, nothing that I would usually bring with me for a night out camping. It's February and I'm expecting it to be nine degrees tonight. So I'm gonna find out how that would realistically go if I were lost for some reason and I had to spend an unexpected night out in the wild with just an emergency shelter. Let's do it. Oh God, it's terrible in here. No! Man, this night's gonna be long. I don't wanna do this anymore. Right, so this is potentially dangerous, of course. So I'm doing this right by my car. My car's just down there in the lay-by on that road. And uh, yeah, I just thought this would be worth trying because if I were out on a day hike and had to spend the night, realistically, I wouldn't have a sleeping bag or a sleeping mat or anything like that. So I'm just gonna see how it goes. I'm not expecting to last the night, to be honest with you. And I'm not risking hypothermia or anything, of course. So if I feel like I can't stay warm enough, I will just be going back to my car. But I'm gonna give it a go. So this is my survival shelter for tonight. I've also got a little whistle on it. So something like this is something that I would just stick in my rucksack on a day hike in case of emergency. Probably never think about it again and never use it. But in this scenario, I need to use it. I've not had this out or looked at it yet. So I'm gonna be figuring this out as I go along. I do know that apparently there's 20 foot of paracord in here to help me put it up. Let's see if we can get it up and then I'll show you everything else that I've got in my day pack and we'll decide how to make the best use of it for the evening. Okay, so I'm guessing the paracord just goes through this. I'm gonna just hang it up to a tree. Okay, let's try it between these two here. Really close together. I'm not sure what height it's supposed to be. Yeah, that works. I think that's it, you know, this is it for the night. It's gonna be interesting. Get inside here. Oh. Oh God. It's terrible in here. So this basically is just like glorified bin bag, well that's what it feels like. It's just a thin sheet. I mean, yeah, it is a shelter, isn't it? Without the rain and the wind. Right, so everything I brought with me for this is what I would usually take on a day hike. So I've got my filter bottle. I always have a filter bottle on a hike so that I can drink from streams, which is grand. I've got my PLB here, of course. So in a real emergency, I could call for help. Pack liner keeps everything dry in my rucksack. I don't use like a rucksack rain cover, I find them really pointless. In here I've got my power bank cook set so I can have some nice hot food. Food, so in here I've got stuff I can cook but also things that I don't need to cook because you can't always cook on a hike. Sometimes you just need things you can just eat. So food in there, med kit, hand warmers. Always, always, always have a set of these in my rucksack little head bug net that will stop slugs going up my nose and stuff. A little sit mat. This is actually half of a light AF mat. Ah uh, yes, so this is my clothes. On a day hike, I don't bring much more than what I'm already wearing. I do bring my little down puppy. I've got little fleece and gloves, hat and neck warmer. And I just bring all those out in a little dry bag. Some baby wipe. Some tissues, head torch, that's it. That is everything. So that's what we've got to make use of. So 
tonight. Right, so this is the hairband that I usually use to sort of fix my rucksack liner clothes. And I'm thinking I might use this to bunch together the other end of the shelter so that there's less airflow coming through, less of a breeze, so I'll hold a bit more heat in. That will make it a condensation nightmare, of course, but I think the priority is heat. It's gonna be wet in here anyway, because I'm wet, so let's try that. I sort of bunch it together like that. That's got to be warmer, surely. Just sort of bunch that all together, so there's no air wind coming in from that direction now which hopefully will make it a little bit nicer uh, hold there so it's not lasted long already i'll keep the worst off though look at this absolute quagmire <laughs> Lovely. It's not very pretty, is it? <laughs> it's funny because when you look at the description on the listing when you buy it, it's this perfectly triangular tent shape. You think, oh, that looks cool. In reality, it's a right mess, but that doesn't matter. This is a two person shelter, apparently. So I wouldn't fancy it and the walls this fabric or plastic whatever it is apparently it reflects back 90% of my body heat and if that's true that will of course make a big difference as well yeah I really don't know how this is gonna go everything is so wet my hands are wet my stuff is wet the shelter's wet everything's wet and um, I've not got much means to dry things with so when I go proper camping, I always take some sort of microfiber towel or Swedish dishcloth or something to clean up with, but on a day hike, actually I have got one little microfiber sort of flannel type thing. It's in my cook set, so I have got that. I can dry my hands on that. That's something. In the summer, I would have a towel with me for swimming. I just don't think I'd carry one in February. I'm trying to keep this as realistic as possible. I think I'm going to cook something now, it's a bit peckish. Let's try and keep my body heat up as well. Yeah, I think I'm going to get my down puffy on as well. I'm already starting to get chilly, but um, I'm saving my hand warmers for later because if I start them now, what well, they last about 10 hours. To be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to make it through tonight anyway. I think I'm gonna end up going back to my car, but on the off chance that I am able to make it through the night, I need to pace myself with the stuff that I've got to keep me warm. How dry am I? I think I'm damp. Just, yeah, the air's wet. Everything's wet. At the end of the day, survival's not fun, is it? And if this were a real life survival situation, it wouldn't be fun. It'd be pretty terrible. The question is, do I want to put myself through that out of choice? Probably not, but we'll see. I'm gonna wreck my down puffing now, aren't I? I hate having sticky wet hands stuck to everything. See the car headlights there? That's how close they are to the road for this. I'm not messing about with this one. Okay. In a way, this little arrangement is easier because I'm not worrying about keeping my sleeping bag dry or anything like that. It's kind of like, oh well, everything's wet, never mind. So in that respect, kind of takes the pressure off. <laughs> but warp-wise, 
I don't know what's in right here. Oh yeah, so I've got gloves and neck warmer and a little hat. I'll save those for later as well. So I've got two packs of noodles in here. So I've got hot meal for now and a hot meal for later as well. And I've also got stuff that I can make sandwiches with. It's always a good idea when you go out anywhere to bring more food than you think you're gonna eat. On a multi-night trip, I'll bring an extra day of food, for example, because if you get stuck somewhere, you've gotta be able to eat, not just for calories and warmth, but for morale as well. Having tasty things to eat can really make all the difference when feeling kind of Tastes like crap. No, I'm already getting cold. What's the time? It's 10 to 6. We've got a long night now as well. The sun's gonna rise. 7:30. Um, I think I'm gonna take my boots off and get properly in. See if that makes a difference. I have got waterproof socks on, which are a godsend in the winter. I am wearing my merino layers as I always do so that's helpful in that they can still keep you warm even when they're damp yeah that does feel nicer actually being right inside I feel considerably warmer already right in here so that's nice man this night's gonna be long look what I've got here I'm still hungry so I'm gonna have a snack so I've got some bread, some tuna, mayo, pepper, and some crisps, of course. It's gonna be so good. You know, I actually can't believe how much warmer I am in here. Just making sure I've got a little gap there for air. I actually don't feel too uncomfortable at the moment. <laughs> this is like survival shelter gourmet food, tell ya. Oh yeah, look at that. Well excited for that. Hi. Oh, hi friends. Oh. <laughs> right, it is 7.30. Just 12 hours to go. Oh, I'm completely sheltered from the rain and wind in here, but I'm just sitting here watching all the condensation dripping down the walls. Having said that, I'd rather be in here than out there. I've checked the temperatures and it was 10.2 outside and 12.4 degrees the inside the shelter which I'm really surprised about actually. Two whole degrees, over two whole degrees of heat difference which is amazing. I still feel cold though, not cold but I'm chilly and damp and uncomfortable but I'm okay. I keep having to sort of do weird little exercises and arm and leg movements to just try and keep my body heat up. It would be so much easier if my clothes weren't damp, but it is what it is. I'm gonna try and wait till 10 o'clock tonight, I think, before I crack open the hand warmers. And it gives me something to look forward to as well. I actually can't wait to get them on the go. <laughs> Look, some water bears. Oh my god, look what I'm sitting on. Oh god. Oh Jesus. This is kind of ridiculous. <sighs> Time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting in that puddle. I'm going everywhere. I thought I was gonna have to leave them when I sat in that massive puddle and I've taken quite a soak in. I think it's gone right through all my bottom stuff and I've got a bit cold. So I've been doing my exercises 
and checked my body temperature. I've got a thermometer stuck in under my clothes. And I'm 36.3 at the moment, which is absolutely fine for me. My normal temperature is actually 36.4. So what I want to do is try and keep it 36 and above. 35 and below, of course, is hypothermia. And we don't want to get anywhere close to that. So I'll monitor it, keep an eye on it, but I feel fine again now. So that's good. Yeah, the water everywhere is just crazy. Ugh. Like camping in a swamp. Okay, it is 10 o'clock. Temperature is fine. I don't know why, because I feel horrible. It's really getting to me being so wet, even though I'm not physically cold. I feel cold, if you know what I mean, just because I'm so wet. I hate it, and it's making me want to leave. But, um, I suppose discomfort is temporary, isn't it? There's no danger at the moment, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite pleased really, just uh, not enjoying this. But it's tense, so I'm gonna crack the hand warmers out. I wanna use this pack liner, because with the hand warmers, if they get wet, they're gonna stop working. So I need to keep them dry so I'm going to put at least one of them in this pack liner and just sort of use it as a blanket over me. Hopefully that will hold in like a layer of warm air. <sighs> oh, honestly, I'm so sick of it. I've got a bit left now because it's 10 o'clock. Nine and a half hours. For now, actually, I'm just going to put both of them in here. I don't know what the best thing to do is really. Yeah, be my little blanket. <sighs> you know what? I feel so nice just to lay down. Oh, I'm knackered. I'm enjoying my little blanket. I can feel the warmth coming off that. I think I'm going to try and rest for a little while just to pass the time, really. This is so horrible. I just want it to be over. Oh. So I've got my rubbish bag under my feet, keep them off the ground. And I've got my little half a light AF mat under my body. And I've got my rucksack and my food bag under my head. It's all right. Oh, my God. Oh, 36.7. It's crazy. I actually don't know. Oh, I'm not warm. I keep thinking of my car bed. So close in the lay-by right there. And my car bunny. So warm and so dry. So floofy. But as I lay in this bag, in this puddle, and feel the chills crawl relentlessly across my wet skin, it's clear that this is not a place for sleep. A brief rest laying down is all I can afford before my temperature starts to drop and I have to get moving again. My mind won't allow me to sleep anyway, but that's good because I feel that falling asleep in this situation could potentially be catastrophic. I need to be alert and managing the situation. Hello. It's half past midnight, nine degrees outside, 11 degrees in shelter, and um, yeah, I still feel rubbish. This is really miserable. I wanted to rest a while, but I can't lay down. My body's just telling me you're too cold. Um, so I've got to just sit up and wiggle around and do my exercises now and again. And I'm fine doing that. I just, um, just 
just seriously unpleasant. We've got seven hours left. It's funny because I knew this was going to be hard. I don't know it'd be tough, but when you're imagining doing stuff like this and you're warm and dry, you sort of, you can kind of imagine, okay, it's going to be really unpleasant, but you kind of think, so yeah, it'll be raining, but I'll get the shelter up and then once I'm in it, I'll be all dry and it'll be okay. But in reality, it doesn't go like that. Everything gets totally drenched. And of course, you've got no clothes to change into like dry clothes and even if I had dry clothes they would get drenched as well it's just a lot harder than I thought it would be but I'm glad that it's mild if it wasn't mild I don't think I would have got this far with it I think I'd be back in my car by now in my car bed so we'll see what the rest of the night holds it is two in the morning and I'm done I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, if this were a real survival situation, it would keep me alive through the night and yeah, it would stop me getting hypothermia, but my God, this is like mentally so draining. I want dry clothes on so badly, I want to rest. Yeah, I think I'm done with that. So yeah, I'm gonna bail on this one. But this was a really interesting thing to try, I think, for me. It really makes you appreciate how important your sleeping bag is and your mat. This is nasty. It's really nasty. Oh, I can't wait to get back to my car. I'm so tired. Oh, right. I'm gonna chuckle this in my rucksack. I'm getting out of here. Oh. So in the end, this came down to mental toughness, which got me through the first nine hours and then it left me. I think completing this until sunrise would have taken a lot out of me and I just wasn't prepared to do it for the sake of a scenario. I definitely don't see this as a failure. During much of the year, when the nights are shorter, those nine hours would have seen me through until sunrise and beyond. Those nine hours could have seen me through to a rescue if I'd been injured and was waiting for help. The flimsy shelter, which felt so miserable and uncomfortable at the time, gave me an extra two degrees of heat. This is more than many of my tents provide and could mean the difference between life and death in a real emergency situation. And while I felt miserable and chilled to the bone, I successfully managed to maintain a healthy core body temperature despite being soaked through from the waist down and damp up top. This experience taught me many things. Firstly, that carrying some form of shelter in a day hiking bag is definitely worth the extra few hundred grams weight carry. So I started shaking already just from being outside the shelter, so it really makes you realise the difference that was making, as unpleasant as it was. Oh my god, the mud. I mean, look. Look what I've been sitting on. But it also taught me that having such a shelter is not going to guarantee your survival. And it's still not going to be easy. Survival is work. If you're in conditions such as these, which are going to drain the heat from you, you have to keep moving, even when you're exhausted. And if you're wet and have no way of drying yourself, you're going to have to work really hard. Thank you, Kenzie, please. It gave me an insight into the kind of mental stamina that would be required in a real survival situation. I mean, this was a mild winter night too. On a colder one, it wouldn't just be hard work, it would be a relentless fight for every minute, hey, <laughs> every second. If nothing else, it's taught me another valuable lesson in gratitude for a dry bed for a roof over my head. For the things we tend to take for granted that are so important 
are so valuable and yet so easy to not even notice that we have them. I had such a good sleep in my little car bed. Good morning.